In this video, we're going to discuss how you can decompose ROA into two components. So just a quick review, ROA is a ratio that we're going to use to measure how profitable a company is given the amount of assets that the company has access to. Okay. So ROA is net income divided by average total assets. But another way of thinking about ROA is that ROA is also equal to a company's profit margin times its asset turnover. Okay, and profit margin is going to be the company's net income divided by net sales. And then asset turnover is going to be the company's net sales divided by average total assets. Don't worry, I'm going to show you all that. I'm actually going to work out how we would go and derive this. So ROA, so we take this net income divided by average total assets. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to take that same thing and we're going to multiply it by net sales divided by net sales, which is equal to 1, right? This, this right here, that's equal to 1. So we're just multiplying this fraction by 1, so that's okay. So that's fine. We're just going to rearrange some things and see what happens. So now, if we take all the, so we take the, we've got the net sales on top here, and we put it over here on top in the numerator, then we have net income times net sales, and then we have average total assets times net sales. This is equivalent to this. This here and this here are equivalent. I'm just now combining it all into one fraction. You see what I'm doing there? Okay. Now, I'm just going to switch something around. It'll make it a little easier to see something. So I'm going to keep the net income times net sales in the numerator. That's going to stay the same. But in the denominator, I'm just going to flip around that we had net sales on the right over here, and now I'm going to put on the left, and then average total assets on the left, I'm going to put on the right. It doesn't mean anything mathematically. I'm just switching around. It'll be easier to show you the next step. Okay, so everything here, we haven't done anything to the equation except rearrange some things. Now, what we're going to do is this. I'm going to basically take this equation. We could think and break it into two equations. Okay, so we could say, okay, net income divided by net sales, just if we break this, this part right here, okay? So we'll just break that off, and then we've got net sales divided by average total assets. That's right here. So again, this is equivalent. This here is equivalent to this. It's just a different way of showing it, okay? Now, if we think about this, we actually have a name for the, so this right here, net income divided by net sales is profit margin. That's a ratio that we call profit margin. So it's, it's basically saying, okay, for every dollar of sales, let's say it was 8%, let's say like for every dollar of net sales, eight cents eventually ends up in net income. Okay, and I'll make another video where we talk about that in more depth. But we've got profit margin, and then here we have this ratio, this net sales divided by average total assets. We refer to that as asset turnover. Okay, and so you could think about it as, okay, let's say that it was, uh, let's say it was four, okay, that this number was four, this ratio. So that's saying, okay, for every dollar of total assets, this company is able to generate four dollars in net sales. Okay, so that's really all we're doing here is we're taking ROA and saying, okay, sure, we could have had uh, ROA, just think of it as net income divided by average total assets, right? So that's basically what we have here because if we multiply these, the net sales here and the net sales here, they cancel, okay? So we could just think ROA is net income divided by average total assets, or we could break it out and say ROA is equal to profit margin times asset turnover, okay? So just another way of thinking about it. So then we can go, and it'll help us when we're analyzing a firm. Let's say that we have a situation where we have two companies, and they earn the exact same profit. They each have net income. So we have flying cars and flying bicycles. Let me change colors here. Flying cars flying bicycles that each had net income for the year ended December 31st, 2019. They had one million dollars in net income for each company. Now we also, I'm going to give you the net sales. So let's say that uh, flying cars had 20 million in net sales and flying bicycles had 30 million in net sales. That's going to become important later because remember we're going to need net sales when we're doing this decomposition of ROA. So our average total assets, we just take the total assets for each of the last two years. So for flying cars, that'd be 8 million plus 12 million divided by two gives us the average total assets. You know, we do that for each company. And now we can calculate the return on assets, the ROA. So for flying cars, we had net income of 1 million. Okay, and we divide it by the average total assets of 10 million. That gives us 0 0.1. We convert it to a percentage. We've got 10%. Okay, and then we do the same thing for flying bicycles. We talked about this in the previous video. We end up with ROA of 30.77%.
now we want to break this down. We want to let's break it down into profit margin and asset turnover and see if we can learn something. Okay. So the profit margin, which again is the net income divided by the net sales for flying cars. Okay. So flying cars, they have the lower ROA of the two companies, but their profit margin is actually higher. Their profit margin is actually higher than that of flying bicycles. So we say that, okay, for, for every dollar of sales, more of it is ending up in net income for flying cars than it is for flying bicycles. But then we say, okay, well then why? Why does flying bicycles have more than triple the ROA of what flying cars does? Well, the asset turnover is much larger for flying bicycles than it is uh, for flying cars, right? So they're really dominating when it comes to the a a asset turnover, right? So we've got this 9.23 and then we've got two. So what, what does this all mean? Okay, so basically think about it like this. For all the assets that Flying Bicycles has, they're doing a much better job generating sales from the assets that they have than Flying Cars is doing. Okay, it might be maybe Flying Cars has some assets that aren't very productive or they aren't being used well, whatever. But we can clearly see that Flying Bicycles has a much higher ROA and it's being driven not by the fact that they have a higher profit margin because their profit margin is actually lower, but by the fact that their asset turnover is much, much larger, more than quadruple what Flying Cars asset turnover is. So they're doing a much better job, given the assets that they have, generating net sales. Now, if you wanted to do a check to see that you got everything right, you could actually multiply you could take the profit margin times the asset turnover, and that will give you the ROA. For example, here, we have 5% profit margin times 2 asset turnover, and that gives us 10% ROA. And we see that, hey, we did decompose this correctly. Similarly, with flying bicycles, uh, we would take 3.33% profit margin, multiply it by 9.23 asset turnover, and that, after some rounding, would give us 30.77% for the ROA. So all we're doing is we can say, hey, we calculate this ROA as uh, you know net income divided by average total assets, but then we can also break it out into its separate components of profit margin and asset turnover.